One of my favourite childhood movies is the 1986 film Short Circuit, which was followed up by Short Circuit 2 in 1988. These movies centre around the experiences of a military robot that is struck by lightning and by some miracle gains sentience. While these movies may not have aged particularly well, it was pivotal to me growing up and wanting to learn about the world myself. The second movie opens with a scene of small toy versions of the robot causing some havoc in a very typical 1980s mall. This was a toy that I always wanted as a kid, but it never seemed to actually exist. Well, you can imagine my excitement recently when I found on the Gambody website a really good and faithful SDL model of this right here. So I had to print it. A link to that SDL file will be in the description by the way. So if you want to download it and follow this process yourself, uh, you definitely can. Normally with resin models, I'm used to printing three or four pieces uh, that slot together, and then it's ready to go. These were a lot more complicated though, with a lot more pieces, which can be a little intimidating. I started with a test print at 120% scale, which is this one here. It didn't turn out too badly, but a lot of these pieces had warped, and it may look okay from the, the camera back there, but... Uh, if you have a look up close, it doesn't look so great. So I had to go back to the drawing board and redo all of my supports. I used Chitubox to create the files. A uh, link to that will be in the comments as well. It's currently my preferred software. It's really easy to use and it generally gives really good results. At this time, I also opted to scale it up to 150% as that would make it a little bit closer to the size of the models uh, from the show. While it's definitely bigger and a lot nicer to work with, I'm thinking 200% would probably be more like the size of the models from the show. However, I only had a small build plate, so uh, this was sort of the size that I decided to work with. When placing supports, I started by auto-creating the medium supports, then adding a few heavy supports at the points where it's going to be under the most stress. This model has a lot of large flat areas, which raises the risk of the model getting pulled off of the base plate or snapping supports, which leads to the warping I mentioned earlier. For light supports, I added them wherever I felt I needed a little bit of more rigidity, but I generally don't add them too much. Light supports are a lot easier to break, and they're generally only good with really small pieces. After a bit more trial and error, I had enough pieces to make two full models without any warping or failures. In construction, I magnetize the back wheel so that it can still swivel, but won't fall out. I also magnetize the over shoulder accessory and arms to give them a little bit more posability. Then they were ready for painting. I used an airbrush for this, starting with a black primer. This particular one is using a gloss black. It doesn't have to be gloss, but since this is going to be a metallic model, I felt this was a fitting base coat. Then I used Vallejo gunmetal metal color to make them look more metallic. I really love the metal color products. They always look fantastic and work great with an airbrush, which is something I can't say for many other metallic paints. For the theme, I wanted to do one as the standard Johnny Five model from the first movie and have a bit more fun with the other. In particular, I wanted to do the graffiti Los Locos theme. I really like this look in the movie and I just feel like it would be a lot of fun to paint. You have been vandalized all over yourself. No, decorations, multicolored petroleum byproducts. Los locos kick your ass. Los locos kick your face. Los locos kick your balls into outer space. To do this, I'm spraying really close to the model to simulate a spray from a rattle can at a similar small scale. I decided to mostly use pinks, purples, and blues as these were the colors most prominent in the movie. Also, they go together really well. I'm not going to do a lot of detail on this model as the spray paint is meant to cover up a lot of that detail. It probably wouldn't look right if I added a lot of additional shadows and highlights as this would make it look like these colors were meant to be there all the time. To finish off the other one, I started with a dry brushing of silver, which gives it a bit more of a highlight. For shadowing, I used panel line. Uh, this stuff works magic, especially on metal objects. For everything else, I just painted in the appropriate colors, and I think I'm calling this done. A very simple model to paint. By far the most challenging part was um, laying out everything in tutor box and then printing to the desired scale without failure. A small word of warning, while the layer lines were quite 
discrete. You will notice them uh, a lot more once it is painted with a reflective paint like metal colors. So that's just something to consider. To me it's super nostalgic to look at these guys. I'm really happy with how the models have turned out. As an artistic kid I remember drawing these for hours at a time while watching the movies. Uh, so yeah, it's just really cool to see them come to life. One other thing I will mention if you're using the files from Gambody, uh, you'll get two versions of the model. One of them is FDM, the other one is SLA. So it'll depend on your printer which one you'll use. The FDM is a little bit more detailed. Um, I think you can sort of make the tracks work, like print the individual parts of the track, which is really cool. Uh, so it's going to have a lot more pieces if you do FDM. So FDM is your filament printing. So if you have a filament printer, you should know what to do with that. SLA, of course, is resin. So if you're using a resin printer like me, then the SLA will probably be your easiest way to get started. So that's it from me this week. Uh, I should probably get back to finishing the models I already have rather than printing more, but I couldn't help myself when I saw this one. So I hope you enjoyed this very quick peek at how I constructed and painted them. Let me know in the comments which of my unfinished projects you'd like to see finish next week. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.